Today, I'm going to be talking about mast cells. What are they? What symptoms do they cause? And what can we do about it? The mast cells are like the first responders for our immune system. They're cells that are generated in the bone marrow, but they develop in the connective tissue. And they are found in every tissue in the body, but predominantly in the tissues that interface with the environment. So we see them a lot of mast cells in the skin, in the GI tract, in the lungs, they're also found in the urinary system. So places where the body is in co close contact with the outside environment. And when we look at the mast cells under a microscope, we see that they have hundreds of tiny little granules in them. These are little sacs in the cells that contain inflammatory molecules. And there are hundreds of different inflammatory molecules that the mast cells release into the tissues in response to triggers. So whenever there's a threat to the body, the mast cells get activated. And we can see mast cells being triggered in response to, for example, insect bites or venoms like a bee sting. They may react to certain drugs, particularly the opiate medications are triggers for mast cells. Certain foods cause the mast cells to activate. And we also know that the mast cells may react in response to stress. And that stress may be a physical stress or it may be an emotional stress. And they react as well to infections and to physical stimuli, things like vibration and friction. So any of these things can cause the mast cells to release these inflammatory molecules that are inside of them and to cause an inflammatory response. Now, that inflammatory response will differ depending on what tissue the cells are activated in. So if there's activation of the mast cells in the skin, we may see a rash, itch, hives, and we may see flushing. So a lot of people will report that they have flushing of the chest wall or of the face or even the ears, that they get bright red without particularly any known stimulus. In the lungs, people may report difficulty breathing, they may have wheezing and shortness of breath. In the GI tract, if the mast cells activate, we see abdominal pain, gas, bloating, diarrhea, sometimes nausea, and in the brain, we see brain fog, and people may complain of headache. At its most extreme, a total systemic reaction when the mast cells are activated is what we call anaphylaxis, which causes, this can be a life-threatening condition where the blood pressure gets very low, people have, they feel like they're gonna pass out, they may actually pass out, they have difficulty breathing, the throat swells up and they had difficulty getting air in through the mouth. And it's very, very important to have a plan in place for anaphylaxis for people who are known to have issues with mast cells. An EpiPen should be on hand for anybody at risk for anaphylaxis. In the GU tract, the genitourinary tract, patients also often report sensation that they have, like a, it feels like a urinary tract infection, so burning on urination, but when the urine is actually tested for infection, there are no bacteria found. So this is an inflammatory reaction in the bladder, which is called interstitial cystitis, and that is a mast cell reaction as well. So what can we do for people who are experiencing mast cell activation? Well, if this is a chronic problem, we generally start with medications that block histamine because histamine is one of the major inflammatory molecules that are released by the mast cells. And histamine interacts with the body at two different receptors. We call them H1 and H2. And the H1 blockers are many of the medications that people 
associate with allergy meds or medications that you would take for a cold, like Benadryl, Zyrtec, Allegra, Claritin. All of these are H1 blockers. Benadryl was one of the very first ones, and it tends to make people drowsy. So for chronic long-term use, we tend to go with one of the second-generation H1 blockers, which would include Claritin, Allegra, and Zyrtec. The H2 receptor is blocked by Pepsid. Other options include Tagamet, but Pepsid is usually the one that our first go-to as an H2 blocker. So usually I recommend Zyrtec and Pepsid as the H1 and H2 blockers, and those are available over the counter. You don't need a prescription for them. The second line of defense is the mast cell stabilizer medications. And this is necessary because histamine is only one of the hundreds of different inflammatory markers that are released by the mast cells. And so if we can stabilize the mast cells and prevent them from releasing all of these inflammatory molecules into the tissue, we can prevent the need for having to block all of those different inflammatory molecules one by one. So chromal and sodium is our best mast cell stabilizer. And in the United States, chromal and sodium is marketed as a liquid. It is a light sensitive liquid. So it comes in these little 5 ml vials and each 5 ml vial contains 100 milligrams of chromal and sodium. And the usual recommended dose is to mix one vial with a small amount of water and drink it 30 minutes before your meals and at bedtime. Now, chromalin is not an over-the-counter medication. It requires a prescription, and the pharmacy will fill it if you have a prescription from a licensed physician. I usually recommend for people to try a low histamine diet in addition to the mast cell stabilizers and the antihistamine medication. It doesn't always help, doesn't help everybody, but there is a list of foods with their histamine potential that is available online. And the foods are ranked from zero to three in terms of their histamine potential. And what I usually recommend to people is to try for a about three weeks to limit themselves to the foods that are ranked zeros and ones. So these are the foods with the mi minimum histamine potential. And then after that, to add in one food each day that's either a two or a three, and to keep track of whether or not the foods are causing any symptoms. Do they cause pain? Do they cause abdominal pain, gas, bloating, diarrhea? Do they give the person difficulty breathing, etc.? They cause blushing, cause a rash. And I recommend for people to keep a log of what, how they react to these different foods. The fact is that sometimes people will be able to tolerate a certain food on one day and then not be able to tolerate it at all on another day. And usually that's because like one day a person may be not in a stressful situation and the body may not be releasing mast cells. They may be, I mean, the mast cells may not be activated in, in that situation. But on another day, if it's a highly stressful day or something has happened or there's been a very stressful environment, there may be a lot of activation of the mast cells, a lot of histamine in the body. Body, and then you may not be able to tolerate a food that you tolerated perfectly well when everything was fine. So it's just important to know that when the body is in a flare state, those higher histamine foods may be more problematic. There are other medications that block specific other inflammatory molecules released by the mast cells. The leukotrienes are one of those classes of medication, and there's a medication called Sing or um, the generic is Montelukast, that is a leukotriene inhibitor. This also is, requires a prescription. And a medication called Zolair, or omalizumab, is an IgE inhibitor. And that can also be very helpful for some patients with severe mast cell activation. That also requires a prescription and is typically prescribed by an allergist, immunologist, physician. So this is a brief overview of the mast cell activation syndrome. If you're looking for more information, I recommend to you a society called the Mast Cell Disorders Society. 
Society, which they abbreviate TMS, and their website is tmsforacure.org. And you can find a lot of information about diagnosing mast cell activation syndrome, about the other mast cell activation disorders, and ways of treating mast cell activation. So thanks so much for spending the time with me today, and I wish you the very best on your journey.